Let's take a look at this example. Before I'm going to start my DC analysis, you're supposed to remember that in order to perform the DC analysis, we're supposed to simply assume that both inputs, okay, I mean the non-inverting input and inverting input are grounded, okay? So we're supposed to reduce the input signal to zero. In other words, we're supposed to ground it for DC analysis. Next, in order to make our analysis a little bit simpler, I'm going to draw voltage sources. I'm going to draw VCC. Okay, this is my positive terminal. This is going to be my negative terminal, and this is my VCC. And I have over here my VEE. Okay, so this is my positive terminal and this is negative terminal. The connection okay, between these two voltage sources is nothing else, just the ground. Next, in order to find current which goes through collector of transistor Q1 and Q2, we're supposed to find first the current which goes through resistor R3. In order to do so, we're supposed to find the voltage at this point. Voltage at this point is nothing else than the voltage at a meter of each transistor. You're supposed to realize that if I'm going to find the voltage at this emitter, so this voltage is going to be equal to this one. Okay, they are going to be the same. So, I'm supposed to simply write that VE is equal negative V. BE. Someone is going to ask why this is negative VBE. You're supposed to realize that this is my VEE. Okay, the current is going to go from VEE to the ground. Okay, from ground will go to the base of each transistor. And anytime the current is entering component, I'm supposed to label it by positive sign. Anytime it's leaving, I'm supposed to label by the negative sign. So if you are going to use a Kirchhoff voltage law, you are going to find that voltage at the meter is going to be negative, okay, VBE. This is going to be voltage from this point to ground. So most of the time I'm going to assume that VBE is 0.7 and because I have negative, I'm supposed to write that this is negative 0.7 volts, okay. Next, I'm supposed to find the voltage across resistor R3. In order to find the voltage across resistor R3, I'm supposed to simply subtract the voltages. VR3. This is also called VRE, voltage across resistor, which is connected to both emitters. This is equal VE minus VEE. Okay, the difference of the voltages of VE and VE is going to give me voltage across resistor R3, where VE we found is equal to negative 0.7 volts minus VE, negative 15 volts. So I can write that VR3, and this is nothing else, just my VRE also is equal to 14.3 volts. Okay, so this is voltage across resistor R3. Next, we're supposed to find the current. So I can write that I R3 is equal to the current I R E. Okay, in some books we are going to see I R E. This is equal V R3 over resistance R3. Okay, this is Ohm's law. So VR3 is equal 14.3 volts over R3, 3.2 kilo ohms. This is equal. Okay, we are going to use the calculator. So 14.3 divided by 3.2 exponent 3. This is equal 4.46. 40 ohms. Okay, so this is the current which goes through resistor 
R3. Next, we're supposed to find the currents I E2 and I E1. In order to do so, you're supposed to remember that the current I E1 is equal to the current I E2, and this is the half of my tail current, okay? Tail current is my I R3 current, okay? So I can write that this is I R3 divided by 2. This is equal 4.46 milliamps divided by 2. This is equal 2.23 milliamps. Okay, so this is this is the current which will go through each emitter. Next, we're supposed to remember that the current which goes through each base is small comparing with the current IC and IE. That's why we are going to make the assumption that IC, okay, the current which goes through the collector of each transistor is approximately equal to IE. Okay, so I'm going to write that that I C1 is approximately equal to I E1. And this is equal 2.23 milliamps. Also, I'm going to write that I C2 is approximately equal to I E2, and this is equal. 2.23 milliamps. Okay, so in general, I'm going to write that IE, where IE represents my IE1 and IE2, is approximately equal to IC. Now, the problem is asking me to find ICQ. Okay, so Anytime problem is asking you for ICQ, you can say that IC is equal to ICQ. Okay, so next we're supposed to find the VCEQ. Okay, the problem is asking me for VCEQ. In other words, I have to find VCE. In order to find VCE, I'm supposed to find voltage at each collector, okay? The formula you're supposed to remember. Vc is equal Vcc minus Ic times Rc, where Vcc is given, and this is equal 15 volts. Okay, so I'm supposed to write that this is 15 volts minus IC, where IC we found is equal 2.23 milliamps. So I have 2.23 milliamps times RC. In our case, this is the resistance 3.2 kilohms. 3.2 kilohms. Okay, R1 and R2. That's my RCs. So I'm going to write that this is. 3.2 kilohms. Okay, next I'm supposed to use the calculator. Okay, and simply type 15 minus 2.23 exponent 3 negative times 3.2 exponent 3. This is equal 7.86 volts. Okay, so this is voltage at the collector of each transistor okay so this is the voltage between the collector and base and between this collector and base next I suppose to find VCE so I can write that VCE is going to be equal to my VCEQ and this is nothing else just simply the difference of voltages Vc minus Ve. 
where Vc is equal 7.86 volts minus Ve, we found that Ve is equal negative 0.7 volts. Okay, so this is negative 0.7 volts. This is equal 8.56 volts. Okay, we found ICQ, we found VCEQ, so we can say that the problem is solved.